I asked him what a rim job was, and then this guy, and again, he was in eighth grade, I was in fifth grade, and he looked around to make sure no one was going to hear him, and he's like, a rim job? It's when you lick another person's asshole. Oh, yes. Oh, God, yes. Welcome back to Is It Still Good? This is the show where we take our rose-colored glasses, we take them off, we watch them change into a fly, and it's with the eyes that remain that we reevaluate the culture of our youth. So we're normally just two grown-up film students who hate growing up. We have some familiar faces. We've brought the music panel back in today. Uh, I'm Bear Kennedy in Chicago. Joining me as always... Andrew Carter in Los Angeles. And we welcome back the Knicks, as we like to call them. Nicholas Iver Call, Nicholas Pierce Stillwell. Full names, you're welcome. Hello, boys. Good to be here. We're back. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Hell All right, yeah. Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most okay thing that's happened to me today. Thank you. <laughs> it's yeah. Monday. How's, how's everybody holding up? Good. Uh, that sounds I, uh... great. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just no I, response. Uh... That's a perfect response. I had a couple plane trips for the first time during quarantine this month, so, you know, oh, good couple. to get out of the house and good to put yourself on the edge of almost getting a fatal disease, so it's exciting. <laughs> Jesus. Where, wait, where'd you go? So early in this, earlier in this month, I went to Baltimore. Um, that's where my wife's dad lives, so we mm -hmm. saw him. Her brothers came as well. Her brother's actually being deployed to the Middle East in December. Um, wow. So it was our last chance to see him before he got deployed. Oh, so we figured man. that was important enough to uh, yeah. roll the dice on the old COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. I would say so. I would agree with that. And then the other one was less important. Uh, it was our old friend Colby's kind of faux wedding. He's having his big one next year, but he had like the official small thing uh, last week. So that was part two. How about that? Nice. I was about it. It's flying. How'd you feel on the plane? They're supposed to be spotless. So in some ways, it's kind of the cleanest time to be on a plane. Yeah, that's what they say. And they keep the middle <laughs> row open, which is just great for bags more than anything else. Um, yeah. But other than that, like we stopped in Denver on the way to uh, Minneapolis. And that airport was one of the more crowded airports I've ever seen, regardless of time. So it was very interesting to yeah. be, be around that many people. All right, well, we're, we're gathered here today, gentlemen, uh, to discuss the Deftones 2000 album, White Pony, and fantastic timing as they just came out with a new one called Ohms on Friday, which I have spent the last couple days listening to. Uh, so as we found out, uh, for me, Deftones are like a God level, you know, God tier band. I know Nick Call is on board. This is actually not retribution for the Coldplay episode this is this is just timing this had been on the, on the docket for a bit but <laughs> i did also enjoy making carter listen to a metal album and still well you said you weren't ever really into him so i was curious uh coming at it from from this angle where, where like you know most of their shit they put out like nine albums or something they're very established so uh, lots to dive into but i just you know right off the bat Carter, did you listen to White Pony, and what did you think? <laughs> I did I didn't, listen I don't to think White. That, I don't. Yeah, I was just checking. I didn't think that first question was a given. So <laughs> no, just, I did. I did listen to it, and I took notes. And here are my, here are my notes. <laughs> it you stinks. don't want to hear them yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pull them up. They're on here. Let me get them. Okay, here we go. I wish you, you ready? I wish you said that you didn't get around to it. <laughs> no no i just had a busy week all right here we go you guys ready these are my notes hit me not fun boring unmelodic not catchy unmemorable just not interesting to listen to didn't grab me at all hated it were you listing off your deftones review or your coldplay review oh it's tough to say that's burn number light one baby light them up <laughs> um no, see, I don't listen to Coldplay. I experience Coldplay. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ, throw kill yourself. On my computer. <laughs> you know, look, I happen to Coldplay. Uh, 
Deftones happened to me. Like, that's how I feel about it. I, I really fucking hated it. I, and I don't really feel that. There are a lot of things that I, I try not to. I know, I, I'm, I'm with you, dude. I'm really glad that we, like, like, because Coldplay was so much fun because we both disagreed. This is going to be another one. I, I don't know if I call it fun, but uh, did, so how many times did, did you get through the whole thing? Did you go back for I got more? through the whole thing. No, I got through the whole thing. The only thing that I remember from listening to it as a kid was that little hook in that song, like Maggot or whatever it's called, <laughs> when he sings, Back to School. I just remember hearing that on the radio a lot on K-Rock as a kid. Um, but again nothing stayed with me nothing excited me nothing grabbed me i think this is some of the worst shit i've ever had to fucking listen to ever it's <laughs> these guys I, I gotta say and usually again i can hear something and i'm like okay for what it is it's good um i just don't think that about these guys i think they are just they're uh, they are so not for me that i have find it a hard time i find it nearly impossible to fathom how they've sold like 12 million albums um and no i don't think i'm missing anything i just think that they fucking suck and I'm, what, part, what part did you hate the most i just yeah, hate I think how one every thing that was interesting you said you didn't think they're melodic like that they're that, like that the, is insane they're, that is an insane they're considered person. like the definition of like a melodic hard metal band yes that's like what they're known well, for fair enough they weren't they didn't sound melodic to me i guess when i used in that context i meant something that and maybe this is not the correct this is probably not the correct definition of, me of melodic but something that just sounds like a fucking song and is catchy and is nice to listen to even if it's i mean like look i know you wouldn't call rage against the machine nice to listen to but they are great. They're very nice and to listen to. They have dynamic yeah. and they are, not, yeah, I, I guess I think just when I think when someone says nice to listen to, I think like laying in the field and butterflies flying around, like it's nice. <laughs> and I don't think you'd call like, you know, Rage or Iron Maiden good metal bands uh, nice to listen to. But I just feel like with the Deftones, they were just so underwhelming to me and just again just so not memorable i couldn't you i i can't name one of their songs from that album except for the one maggot because i just think the spelling of it is really funny and i don't remember one hook one lyric except for the back to school thing i remember nothing it just didn't stick with me and i'm so surprised that you guys bear and, and call like them because you guys have good taste and like, what the hell happened? Like, how do you like these times, guys? <laughs> Andrew, how many times did you listen to it? Once. I couldn't get through it again. You only listened to it once? Are you serious? Yeah. All right, I, so that's, no, 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 hold on a minute, hold on a minute. That's uh, only listened to it once. I'm sorry, but that's all I need. I could tell from the first 13 <laughs> seconds of the first song that I was like, I'm not into this. How and many songs did you album? skip with that one time I throw? didn't skip any. I got through <laughs> both. I got through White Pony and I got through Ohms. I got through both of them start to finish. And I guess here's the thing. Did it make me, like, was I, <clears throat> did I hate it enough to skip it and like all that shit? No, but I was definitely just letting it in one ear and out the other. Not, I didn't retain anything again. Um, I also, I just think that, you know, obviously it is a, it is a, a taste thing, but I just, I don't know. I'm just not into these guys at all. And I, and I remember being a kid and just not really thinking much of them. Um, but yeah. So while, my... while you were listening to them, what movie were you watching at the same time? <laughs> uh, Deep Blue Sea. Uh, that would no, a good fit. <laughs> that would be a good fit. All the shark carnage. Um. But no, look, I, I, all, all kidding aside, I obviously I respect uh, your guys' opinion on it. Um, but <laughs> no, I do. I, I mean, obviously, but I just look, look, clearly they're doing something right for a lot of people if they've sold 12 million fucking albums worldwide. But just for me, they just didn't they just didn't strike a chord. I I I, I felt nothing when I listened to their music. It didn't excite me at all and i know i've said that ad nauseum now but i just didn't feel anything so that's my verdict amazing uh let's go let's go real quick to stillwell so was this the first time you listened to this album um straight through or because you said you weren't into them 
but you're plugged into shit. So I, you know, you had to have been exposed to some of their stuff at some point. Yeah, I I just had never really listened to them. I think that's more what I meant by like I'm not into them. Um, <clears throat> I knew Change, which is like you know their their biggest song. I mean, is, isn't that their biggest song? Technically, I'd say probably that. Yeah, I I think oh, the average like, person might know that one. Is that the one that's like I watched you change? Oh, uh, look who remembers all the choruses all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every song, I'm like, oh, is that uh, the one that goes? <laughs> by, the end of this, the by the end of this episode, I'm like, all right, guys, look, I loved it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, I mean, this came out in 2000, so I was like fifth grade, I guess. Um, I don't know I don't know where, you know, I mean, I was listening to other shit, but I wasn't listening to Deftones, and I feel like they were kind of just the band that was always over there for me, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know when I, like, first heard about them, but, like, you know, I, I've certainly known about them and they like have opened for bands that I like, not that I've seen them live, but like they've kind of been on my radar, but I've, I've never dug in. I've never listened to more than, you know, really change or maybe some of their other bigger ones that might have gotten played on K-Rock a little bit. Um, so this was just like, I mean, I kind of went into it thinking that I wasn't really going to like it, um, which, which was interesting because like, for, you know, you guys asking me to do this podcast, I'm much better at talking about things that I really like. Barry, you're really good at talking about things you don't like. Um, <laughs> so much. <laughs> and I mean that as a compliment. Um, so, like, I was like, man, like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. This is going to be awkward. Like, um, but I, so I listened to, I, I listened to the album probably like five or six times all the way through. Um, the first time, I, I actually really kind of didn't dig it. Like, I did not like it it kind of put me in a bad mood. I don't know. Like I just, I didn't really enjoy it. And I went back though and I kept listening to it, which I think is actually really important. I mean, even artists, even albums from artists that I love, sometimes the first time when I listened to it, I, you know, it didn't quite click or I'm like, this feels weird. So I, I think it's good to listen to something more than once. So Carter, if you get a, a point dinged for that. Um, I, I forced myself to listen to oh, it don't again worry, I don't and, give a shit. and many more. Um, no, and like, my thing is that I found myself liking a lot of elements on the album, but the full package just isn't quite there for me as a band. Um, I think that, uh, what's their guitarist name? Steph Steven, Carpenter. Steph Carpenter. I think he's really good. Like, I think his riffs rock. I think their drummer is really good. Like, all the instrumentation is there for me. I just think like vocal wise and full package wise, it, it sometimes it's kind of clashing, um, which is interesting. I was actually reading about like the band and getting familiar and reading about this album when they made it. And apparently um, Chino and Steph, the guitarist, lead singer and guitarist were like clashing a lot when they recorded this album. Like I read they actually like would get in fist fights while they were recording this. And that made like a lot more sense after I read that and I was listening to the album. I could like feel the tension, you know? I could feel the tension while I was listening to this album, but um, I actually like their heavier stuff more than their like mel more melodic, softer stuff. I know that like they're kind of known for, for having both and I think some people prefer the softer stuff. The new album they just put out, Ohms, is definitely on the heavier side, which I actually yeah, liked more. Yeah, first track, Big especially. Time. Yeah, but... Um, I liked, for me, like, I, I liked the heavier stuff more um, than, like, where there was kind of more, I guess, more room for air, maybe. So I'm, I, I'll say that, like, listening to it more than, more than once helped, and I, I have a lot more appreciation for them as a band than I did before, certainly after the first listen, or certainly more than I did the first listen. But uh, it, it took me a while to get there. I'm not, I'm not all in on Deftones, but I, I do think there's a lot of good stuff they're doing on this album. Did, did this album sound dated to you? Um, I mean, it kind of reminded me of like all that new metal stuff from, from their time, which is also funny. I was reading that like, so they've sold, I mean, they're a successful band now, but like this album did not do that great in 2000. And this is, you know, when CDs were, selling millions of copies in a week like I was reading that it debuted at number three and it sold 117,000 copies 
And <laughs> there's like a quote from, um, I think it's from Chino in some interview he did kind of more recently. And he, he talks about how like, this is like quintessential like 90s, early 2000s record label, like what you think would happen. Like apparently they sat them down in a room and they were like, well, you know, like Papa Roach and Lincoln Park sold six million albums and oh you know you God. you you did 100k like what are we going to do about this you know it's oh like God. the a and r guy kind of lecturing them which is that i mean that sucks like i don't think any artist should have to deal with that but it reminded me of like obviously that that time in that era but i also read that like they were very adamant that they didn't want to be in the new metal category like they wanted to be adjacent to it they wanted to be as far away from it as they could and they actually turned down opening slots for Corn and Limp Bizkit because they didn't want to be bucketed with them, which I think is like for a new band that, you know, obviously it's, it, you know, when White Pony came out, it didn't do as well as maybe they wanted. They, toured, they turned down those opening tour slots because they were like, we kind of, you know, us being our own thing is more important to us than, than everything else, which I actually really, really respect. Yeah. And to add on to that, I think one of the biggest things for them was they didn't really like the collaboration between rock and like rap, which you saw a lot of in other new metal bands like Limp Bizkit, Lincoln Park, Corn, Papa Roach. So they didn't want to kind of be associated with that, like you were mentioning Stillwell. So I think that's why they probably stepped away from those opening acts. They wanted to be more of kind of a pure alt metal, which is what they evolved into later on after kind of starting out with that new metal label. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I I don't have any perspective on them because I, I bought this album in 2000 and I listened to their shit a lot. What made and, you and want I, to buy this album? Did you hear something on the radio? Heard Change, liked it. Um, and then I heard Back to School and I really liked that riff. So I picked it up. I, I know, I don't know why I remember this, but I know I bought this at a Sam Goody. And oh, I yeah, bought that was, the, that was the, spot. the reissue with Back to School on it. Because there was a couple different, I guess, pressings of this CD. But the original one they came out with didn't have Back to School on it. So the mm. studio, I probably in the same time, uh, that they were having that sit down conversation came back and said hey we need another single like why don't you rework like the back part of pink maggot at the end let's make that like a, a harder song let's let's do a single off that and like mm -hmm. do some rap rock shit and she know the singer was like that's the dumbest <laughs> shit ever i'll write the stupidest fucking song here in 15 minutes and he wrote back to school and they recorded it and stuck it on wow. the front of the album um so i like that song as a kid i still like that riff i think <clears throat> that the uh, second track, which I don't know how to fucking pronounce that, Feta Sierra, is a is a much more interesting opener. But I like the I like playing that this album specifically straight through. I like how it the the opener and the closer are like mirror images of themselves. Like that yeah. that back to school. Depending on the day, that's either the worst song they've ever recorded, or just kind of like a throwback to the early two thousands. But if you play it straight through and you get like the second half of that on Pink Maggot trailing out, it's really cool. Like that little dichotomy there is is fantastic. So that's what brought me into it. And from there, I was fucking hooked. Um, I, I don't know that. I, I'm glad still what you said you picked up on the, the tension and what they're kind of doing with some of the opposing <clears throat> styles. That has always, always super worked for me. The The crushing metal part of the band always butting up against what I think from everything I've read is Chino's desire to make a more um, like romantic, dreamlike experience from his tracks is is awesome. And in the singing, he's gotten away from the screeching as he's gotten older because he just can't do it. He does it well, but I like when he's he's not doing. It. I was gonna say he does it on arms a lot. <laughs> he doesn't do it as much as he did on the old stuff. And that's true. On, he doesn't do it as much as from like a couple albums ago, he even said like, I just can't do it. So he's running it through distortion more than he's just yelling. The guy is 47 oh, okay. years old right now. Um, wow. Which is nuts. It uh, is just kind of like on the vocal um, path we're going down. It's interesting. Still, I think you mentioned that, you know, his vocals did not resonate with you as much like his style. Um, it's actually, it's, it's considered one of the more distinct voices in kind of that alt rock category. And it's like one of the things that attracts people to Deftones. So maybe like wow. on the flip side of that coin, maybe that's something that 
pushes folks away, you know? Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not what you expect. You know, I, I feel like every time you think he's going to go one way, he goes the other. And so I experienced that a lot the first time through. Like, I was just like, man, like, I just like, I was kind of confused to be honest. Um, Cause it is really unique with what he does. And, you know, he's not singing a straightforward melody, a straightforward melody over, you know, some heavy guitar chords, like, Limb Biscuit and Corn and all these other bands that were around that time. Like he's doing, I mean, the the dreamlike, uh, the dreamlike sound uh, bear that you said actually makes like a lot of sense. And I get what he's trying to do. I, I think it was just I had to I had to warm up to it. Um, it's not like, you know, it's not like radio pop friendly right off the bat. And and maybe it's you know not supposed to be. I mean, it's probably not supposed to be. But I think like his uniqueness is certainly, you know, what, what makes them the Deftones, but it took me a while to really get used to it. Cause I think right off the bat when he, when he put this album on, at least for me, it was, uh, it was he was taking a lot of left turns and I, I kind of got lost in it. But that's giving that's it, so giving interesting. It, I'm so yeah. used to it. It's like, I, like, he's probably like my second favorite singer working. Like, I love it. So that, that's like you not being prepared for it is super interesting. Who's your first favorite singer working? Mike Patton, for sure. Not close. Who's Mike Patton? Faith No More, Mr. Bungle. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. He also has but a I... very distinct um, voice. And and the largest range out of anyone in rock. He so what like is it? Six for... or seven octaves. <clears throat> To, to bear and call, and I guess to, to, to an extent to Stillwell, what is it about the Deftones that you like so much? What is it about them that, you know, she knows your favorite singer and, you know, you love them? I mean, similar to what you asked me about why the hell I like Coldplay. Why the hell do you like these guys? One of the things I really like about the Deftones is they're just distinctively the Deftones. Like for other bands and different genres, I feel like it's sometimes hard to tell it apart, especially with bands these days but the Deftones are just, they have such a unique sound, but at the same time, they've been able to evolve from album to album. So they've, you can see this progression as musicians, but at the same time, recognize the same things that they do, the same kind of unique patterns they have throughout their music and throughout their career. So I think just having such a unique sound, um, and Stuhl touched on this earlier, uh, it's just, it's very different. Um, and if you're not used to it, uh, it can be a little rough around the edges, but there's just really no one quite like them. And that's why I really like them. Yeah, I agree. I, I straight up don't love the heavier stuff as much as I like the softer shit and the more melodic stuff that they've put out. So I like, I disagree with your take Carter that you can't put this on and like relax. Like I, the Deftones hit a weird, weird niche where they're, they can fucking shred but their best shit is kind of more dreamy, more ethereal, and very, it, it kind of takes you away. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of, they, they really hit the wall of sound type production, especially on this, on White Pony and the, the new one, Ohms, um, which are both with the same producer, Terry Date. They are basically, if The Cure played metal, which is a really, really weird mashup of styles. I, and I really that. like that. Um, and I, I, there's a couple of songs I don't like overall from them. And I tend to, when I listen to White Pony, I don't always listen to Elite, even though they won a Grammy for that, for best metal mm -hmm. performance. That one just kind of can, can grate on me. But I'm actually specifically surprised that you didn't like the song Teenager on White Pony. Like that song is on here for you. Uh, that, that one is like a, like a soft ballad. That's an interesting track. Yeah, for me, well, that was actually my favorite, my favorite of the soft songs, like Teenager yeah. was my favorite. That was one that I wrote down. That's a good song. I'll listen to it again. Um, it's no, I will. Lie. No, I will. I'll fucking, I, I was going to do it right now, but I, I don't want to, you know, take up, take up this nice, this nice meeting we got here. But uh, <laughs> I, remember, no, I, I, I bought this fucking CD from Sam Goody and it was like, remember they had shelves of CDs and the CD would be in a long cardboard yeah. container. I don't yeah. know why I have such a strong memory of that, but that's how I bought this album. Well, that's Nick how Hall. we all bought CDs. Yeah. Like, well, and, and should, another like, thing that goes, sorry, just really quickly. Another thing that you, that you said reminded me, it's like, 
not only does this music, you know, you asked Nick if it sounded, if you asked Stillwell if it sounded dated. Um, I don't think the production or anything sounded dated, but, and I don't really necessarily think the music kind of dated, but it did remind me of, yeah, of what Stillwell said, like of that, like, you know, grungy new metal at that time. But the other thing that you said that stuck out to me was like, remember when we used to hear one song and then go buy the entire CD? Like that's how we discovered other songs. That's how we discovered that the band had other shit. You know, you'd hear like all the small things on the radio and then you'd go buy Enema of the State and you'd hear the whole thing and be like, oh shit, there's more. You know, it's so different today with kids, you know, and like how they consume music. And if they hear a single, they'll just like, it's a singles game, you know, like they put out a single and then there's no album for it. Not that they're, that's not true. It just takes, it's just different. Like they'll put out a single and then they'll put out another single and then another single. And then maybe the album will come out much later. But back, back in the day, it was like single, the album's coming out, you know, end of the month or whatever. And then you go and you get the album to hear everything else. Yeah, I, I must be also, an idiot. I still like listening to albums. I still like putting. No, stuff I do too. I'm saying I like yeah. it. Yeah. I was just gonna go off. I, I think for for a lot of different artists, um, as far as listening styles, when you listen to them, you'll listen to a song of theirs, or you'll go to their discography and you'll pick out certain songs. For Deftones, I think it's better if you put on an album and just go front to back and get the full experience. Um, it's just a totally different feel. The songs play off each other, like Bear was mentioning with the first and the last off White Pony. It's just, it's a different style of listening, I think. Mm-hmm. Nick Hall, well, when did I you get your... To. Sorry, I just talked right over you. Um, I, was just, I was just gonna say that, you know, I definitely prefer listening to cohesive albums and this felt like one. I think to Carter's point, like you don't, you don't get that often nowadays. It's such a singles game and streaming game and you know, you really only need like a couple good ones, if that. Um, but this, like, you know, regardless, I think of what you think about it, it feels like a cohesive album that sums up that moment in time for them, which I really love. Hell yeah! I, I was curious, Nicole, when did you get your hands on this? So for me, it wasn't right off the bat. Um, like you got in two thousand, I did not get into the Deftones <clears throat> until high school. Um, mm-hmm when I realized there was other stuff to listen to besides pop punk and Hey Ya by Outkast, just <laughs> other things out there. Um, but yeah, I really kind of fell into this like kind of alt metal groove, I guess, where just bands like Deftones and like Breaking Benjamin and Faith No More and Chevelle, not to say that those are all similar, um, but just bands like that kind of came into my purview. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like high school is when I really started to branch out just from my musical taste. Uh, kind of going back to what we talked about a few um, episodes ago, where I was pretty much pop punk just growing up exclusively. Um, high school is real, where I really kind of started looking at, you know, different kinds of rock, metal, rap, kind of everything across the board. Um, but yeah, and it was just like, it was one of the first albums that I really was able to like blast in my car too. Cause I remember I got it the summer before I got my driver's license. Um, and I just feel like the experience of like blasting music in your car by yourself for the first time is interesting. And when you can do it to something that can really give a lot of energy out. And like you said, there's a lot of melodic songs, but there's a lot of hard songs too. So just playing things like Deftones and kind of the more hardcore music that I got into and just blasting that in my car. That's kind of what reminds me of my turning point for getting into Deftones and to other music kind of like that. Yeah, when, when you, the, the Deftones plays very well loud. Like you can turn their shit up and it rips. Like I, when I heard the, the first single they put off the new album, which is the last track on it, Ohms, uh, I just couldn't, I was just like laughing to myself. I'm like, yes, this is the exact sound I want. I just could not stop turning it up louder. Like it gave me like a, like a, almost like a chill through the spine. Like, oh, they absolutely still have it. And this song fucking rules. Um, they're <laughs> like in, in a car too. Like you can, you hear a couple bars of a Deftone song. You're like, yeah, we're going to, we're just going to, we're going to hurt the old e- eardrums on this one. <laughs> What was the first single they put out on Ohms? They put out the song Ohms. The last song. Okay. Which is weird for a, a single, but I I think that's one of their better songs they've ever recorded uh, for someone who listens to their entire catalog. 
catalog a lot. That one is well up there. I fucking love that song. Uh, they put out Genesis second. I love Genesis. I thought that was awesome. a sick album opener oh, for sure. It, that, like, you, you kind of have an idea that they're going to not stick with the synth from the intro and then it just beats yeah. you over the head. It's <laughs> fucking sweet. But they bring the synth back a couple times. Well, their the synth player is a full fledged member of the band. Like, they did the thing for White Pony where they brought Frank Delgado into the band and it was like that stunt move of putting a DJ in a rock band. But they've never oh, used mm -hmm. him in a stunt capacity. Like he throws some shit in there, and they and they use the synth in a way that's great. And that's another thing that's mm -hmm. real close to the Cure is he's not like a background member. Like there, right. there's a lot of good synth on the on the new album. I thought it was awesome. They're using Frankie D out the ass. That is something yeah, I, a lot of these days. Like not even just for, um, you know, kind of alt metal like. Uh, um, like the deft tones, you see that a lot in hardcore. You see a lot of synth. You see a lot of keyboard works. So I think it's yeah. it's been I don't want to say like a revelation, but it's just really interesting. A lot of these you know pure rock bands are incorporating some kind of electronic element. Um, it just really opens up what they can do. Yeah, yeah and I, I think too, like, definitely. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Like when I listen, because I, I mean I went from like never having really listened to them. I went from White Pony kind of their classic third album all the way to ohms and going right into ohms um you know it just getting familiar with their sound it sounded like an updated version of the deftones but it sounded like them and i think like i actually really enjoyed the synth throughout ohms because they they, they kind of bring it back in a lot of ways but they use it like they use it as a really cool tool on a lot of different songs especially for an album that like is so much heavier um call to your point like it's cool when bands kind of like bridge that gap between an instrument that you might not necessarily think of um with a heavier guitar riff yeah and i i agree that like the the tension in this band is what makes them awesome is what keeps them interesting and their last album gore which i think is fucking great from 2016 that was definitely a chino album uh and this one is definitely a steph album and apparently he was just kind of even not even that involved in writing gore and this one he's like front and center all the time he's got a nine string <laughs> guitar he's playing which is great uh, i agree i think abe is is an amazing percussionist and somehow has been able to do interesting drumming for 20 years without just hammering a double bass the whole time in a fucking metal band which is that's like weird to where it's like why didn't you just go that direction that's what everybody else does and I just, yeah. I, I've always loved Steph's guitar playing. I, I think he's from the same school as like Tom Morello. And I'd say this is weird, but Jay Giles, where just a really well executed <laughs> three note riff that just rocks and you just get that perfectly. There's nothing better. I mean, he's, he's not, he, he's not that complex. He's not shredding um, like a thrash metal guy, but it, yeah. it to me, it, it almost always works. I love it. No, he's like the driving force in the band melodically, um, which which I I really really enjoyed. I think like he he drives the song whether he's he's up front and center for a lot of their stuff. But I like where I'll say that like on their softer stuff, I kind of like when he dials it back because then you really get to hear some interesting things going on with the percussion um, and and kind of let that shine. Yes. Yes, delay. <laughs> We're all waiting also. for the next person. Like, <laughs> and yeah, I gotta say the 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 only thing I liked about Ohms was the was the synth. That was like my. <laughs> I mean, there there is plenty of it, but yeah, if you didn't like White Pony, Ohms is gonna be a yeah, a tough, of course, a not. tough listen. I knew it too. The minute it started, I was like, yeah, not for me. And I think, <laughs> you know, first of all, it's funny. Even whenever I was going off on my rant twenty minutes ago, I feel like I've even learned stuff about the band since then. Um, and I didn't know about the tension and that's an interesting thing, um, to learn because I can def I now looking back, I'm like, yeah, I definitely heard that. And I feel like the flip side of that is for some people like, you know, Barry, you're saying like, I love the tension for me. I think that was a part of why I don't like them and why I don't like their music is because it just, there's something about it that doesn't feel natural and cohesive. It feels like they're like bump, bump, like, uh, what's it called? It feels like they're, you know, butting heads and 
at odds. And I feel like that comes through. And I think that it's funny that you say, you know, that, uh, you know, you, you, the, some of the songs you can relax to. And, and you know what? I, I can't remember if I, if, if I said like, you, you can't relax to this or whatever. I don't necessarily think that you can't relax to it. I just find it forgettable. And, and I think that the fact that these guys are, you know, having tension, they're in this weird, like middle ground. So it's almost like, what do you, what do you want to be? Do you want to be this, you know, like softer, more magical with some heavy elements? Or do you want to be like this screaming metal? And I guess for me, like, I understand that bands do things differently. I understand that you can have a song that, you know, has this and has that, and it still is the same band. But I think that's my issue with them is that, they just, in terms of my reaction to them, they just fall into this middle ground of stuff that for the most part, I'm indifferent to. And I know I said that I like, oh, I fucking hate this album or whatever. And that is true. I was very like, oh God, I can't stand this when I was listening to it. But ultimately I'm not going to really think about these guys much. And I think I'm just, they're just not going to do it for me. However, I will listen to Teenager again. Uh, I think, I, so I think, I think to give us more, more perspective on your viewpoint, if we could like take it broader, more high level. Do you like any like metal or hardcore music at all? Or is that entire That's a, genre like out? This is my exact question. Though. That's a yeah. great question. Um, so give me an, ex give me a couple bands that are like, I, I guess you could say, cause like I said, Rage Against the Machine, but I don't think they're quite the same as the Deftones. I don't know if you can like really loop them together. I guess you can in some respects, but they're pretty, I don't know, like, they're pretty different, especially Zach De La Rocha's voice. Like, that is, and, you know, that's very Yeah, different I would me. say but, those two bands are pretty stark contrast. Yeah, they're not really. So give me some bands that are, I guess, like, in the same category of Deftones, and I'll tell you whether or not. Incubus. I, I, I do like Incubus, yeah. I'd say Incubus is more on the soft side. Let me give you a glass drop. popular, popular hardcore band. Well, not hardcore, but um, very popular, System of a Down. I love System of a Down. I you love do. to I love Toxicity. That's one of my favorite albums ever. My man. Like, so so but here here's the thing though. I admittedly haven't heard much else much other System of a Down. Uh, I couldn't tell you their last album. So yeah, I don't know too. if that means like <laughs> I only like Toxicity or if I like them and will but I think that's okay so they're an example of a band who like talk about dynamic i mean they do just in that song chop suey they do so many things that you're just like what the fuck is happening this is this is incredible and it's different and it's weird and i know you guys will probably laugh when i say this too but another band i feel that way about and they they're not a metal band at all but they did a little bit with their i think it was their third or fourth album did anybody remember sum 41's album chuck yeah. yeah, they did, they did have some, there's some hardcore. There's some metal there. stuff in there, and it works, in my opinion. I really well, like it. Their 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 guitar player um, is a huge metal fan. I mean, there's yeah, he's a he's a riff guy. He can shred. You see you see bits and pieces of it. Um, you on did the first fat album, lip, you see it more, but you see it more on "Does This Look Infected," and then you you know you hear it even more on Chuck. Yes. So, but like, but, I think I I think it's different. Like you're talking about just like metal guitar playing. Um, whereas like, I feel like this, I mean, this album is heavier than a lot of that stuff, you know, yeah, System of a Down, so System of a Down, it's probably similar caliber of heavy, but it's interesting that you, cause I, I, I like System of a Down and I like heavy stuff. And I think that's why, like for me, I think if you're not a full fan of like, you know, maybe some of his vocals and, different things he's trying to do on the softer songs. Like the heavier songs are pretty straightforward and the riffs yeah. are pretty straightforward. And for me, like that was kind of my gateway into like, okay, like there are, there are elements in this that I like, and then giving it more listens, I, I, you know, was able to kind of form my opinion on it where overall, I think they're, you know, they're not, they're not going to be my favorite band in the world, but I think they're pretty solid for what they do. Yeah, I think yeah. System of Down plays faster consistently than the Deftones do. The Deftones almost have a yeah. slower sound overall. They do. Um, and especially on the new album, like I, the one song right in the middle, Pompeggi, which I'm sure is not how you say that, yeah. that song kind of sucks. That is a fucking slog to get through. Yeah, I remember hearing it and being like, what the hell is this called? You have and no idea what I'm saying. No, I, I do. I remember <laughs> hearing a song that sucked 
and being like, God damn it. And clicking the, oh, what's this one called? And clicking my phone and it's, and Pompeji came up and was like, okay. Pompeji is where is. like, like on ohms, like I was like, I was in it, you know, leading like start with Genesis all the yeah. way to that song. That's about like 55, 60% into the album. And then they kind of lose me on the newer record after that. But I liked, I generally liked, you know, everything before that. That, that I, song's I just like, it, it just yeah. it's it fucking grinds it to a halt. Like I've I was reading reviews and stuff, and it's getting pretty universal praise, and no one called that out, which is weird to me. It's like that that song is is a bummer, and it lasts forever. Um, I know. Am I remembering well, it incorrectly, or did they mention? Is there like religious stuff on that song? That it's like the there. It's all about religion. Yeah, I thought I heard some god shit. There's some god I think that's shit. why I looked at it too. I was like, what's this? I don't mind some god shit, but it's just like a fucking chore. I, I do think they bring it back on the next track uh, off of uh, This Link is Dead. It, it gets me through it, but that, you, I don't know how that one ended up on there. It's a better album it almost, without it. It almost felt like, mm -hmm. like what I was reading is like some of the critics were citing Pompeji as like, oh, the, the Deftones fans that like the ballads, like this is going to be the one that you're probably going to gravitate to because the rest of it is so heavy and so, um, you know, so led by their guitarist seemingly. Pompeji almost feels like it was like, well, we got to make one that like kind of, kind of brings in the other side of it, but it, it, it felt forced to me. I, and it's a big I, turning yeah. point when you're listening to it. I completely agree. And I, I've listened to it probably six times or so since Friday. Every time I just want to, I'm forcing myself to listen to it. I want to skip that shit. You want to skip time. that song? Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. I guess, but also, you know, I guess to fully answer your question, call about like, is metal just kind of out for me? I would say probably yes, it is. Because every time someone really, really screams, honestly, with the, I guess the exception of, you know, elements of System of a Down and, <clears throat> and some of Linkin Park, I don't mind that. But yeah, like the really, the really loud scream, it's never really been my thing. Um, so that's- It's interesting that- that goes it's interesting it. that you like you like the heavy Lincoln Park stuff with Chester screaming, but you know, because because um, like to give an example on White Pony, like when I listen to Elite, which is actually I think my favorite song on that album, it like does. that sounded Ooh. that sounded like a Lincoln Park song to me. I mean, the Deftones probably wouldn't want someone to say that, but like it just you know it was it felt familiar. It felt like the heavy Lincoln Park stuff that I also like, and it's interesting that like you. Because you're not like a straight, no, I don't, I don't, you know, I I have my level of heavy and I'm going to keep it here. You know, you name no, System yeah. of a Down, you, you, lame, you named other bands that, that I think get to the level of the Deftones in Dude, terms what's of that, that tone. Go ahead, so it's sorry. interesting that you didn't, it's interesting that you didn't, I guess, find elements of this album that you liked and you just kind of weren't into any of it. Yeah, that shocked the pants off me and especially still when you were like, oh, you know, we were texting, you're like, oh, I like Lincoln Park, but I never got into Deftones. I was like, dude, I got great news. There's nine Deftones albums you're about to really <laughs> like if you like Lincoln Park. Well, another thing, and I was texting with Stowell about it too, another thing that the Deftones reminded me of, and I'm sure you're about to throw up there, but one band they reminded me of that I haven't listened to in years was P.O.D. Yeah, that's oh, not boy. that weird. That's not that weird. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not, I, yeah, it's not that weird, but I, I like P.O.D. more. And I, I mean, POD is very not good, though. Yeah, see, I, I knew I don't you guys see any were world where, where POD is better than the Deftones, especially. I mean, even even at their peak, not, nothing, no POD song has ever been as interesting as as anything on White Pony. Yeah, but they're catchy. Like, and and you know what? There, Maybe that's my standard. That's this. what you like. That's what we'll I like. Say no, that for, I, uh, I will say that for POD. Um, one time, I went to a Christian summer camp when I was a a wee lad, and you could only bring music that was, you know christian in nature so i had pod like their what is it is satellite like their one big album they had back in the day yeah yes. that one yeah. and then uh the other one was uh like the fundamental elements of south town which was their oh. the one right before wow that. look at that i know i, don't, I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I, didn't <laughs> I know i only know that because i just like was listening to them again the other day so i guess i'm th i thank the deftones for being reminding me about pod because i enjoy some of their their they're like radio hits but look i'm not 
and I even said this to Nick. I'm like, I don't like love POD or anything. I'm not like, fuck yeah. I'm just kind of like, seems oh, like yeah. you do. No, I enjoy. <laughs> I enjoy. You just see a poster. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a poster just goes up. Yeah. But no, I, I, no, I, I think you're right to say, that, yeah, I like, I like catchy stuff. That's always been my thing. But like, so I guess to, to the element of, or not to the element, to, to your point of me liking catchy stuff, do you guys, not like catchy stuff or is it more you're just that's not really your uh your bread and butter i think it's really easy for people to hate on catchy songs um you know i feel like there's like a sect of the music population that's like oh if it's catchy it's popular it's not good yeah because um, like, like, because i only like things that i find on my own that you don't know about yeah um, it's not to say there aren't a lot of horrible horrible catchy songs out there yes there are as is evident by any top 40 song on the radio now um but yeah i mean catchy is fun i mean that what that's what makes music fun i think as far as music goes there's a lot of different things you can take away from it but sometimes if a song's catchy and you can bob your head to it and sing along that just kind of you know makes the experience that much more richer so but do you think the depth tones are catchy i think it depends on the song I no, think they, no, they 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 their song structure is usually so against what you think. It, it's tough to to yeah. describe yeah. it as catchy. I would say they've they've had a few radio hits that I would argue are catchy. Um, I feel like Hole in the Earth stays with me. Um, awesome song. It's in the movie This Is the End too, which is a great n- needle drop towards the end of that movie. It's a great flip. Wait, but when yeah. is it? And this is the end. <laughs> when Danny McBride shows up in the bus. They play the first like thirty seconds off it. It's fucking perfect. No, that's a. Is it? The, is the, are you the Deftones? No, because they end with the Black Sabbath song in that movie. Um, I didn't know that. They okay, ended, I'll check, uh, I love that movie. I'll check it out. Yeah, I'll check out the yeah, call. Mean, I, call. I was gonna say I I agree with you, and I think um in terms of Deftones and catchiness, and I think that. I mean, maybe if when I was in the fifth grade, if I if I listened to this, I would have a different opinion. But I think first listen, that's that's what made White Pony like a little difficult for me. Sounds like it mm-hmm. made it difficult for Carter because it's not it's not straightforward catchy rock like I'm Limp a Biscuit, Lincoln Lincoln Park, Papa Roach. That's all pretty straightforward catchy stuff. Whether it's yeah. good or bad, it's it's you know they're writing catchy music, right. you know, pretty simple stuff. Um, and this is, I mean, this is not like that. Like, like I was saying earlier, they, they take a lot of left turns that, you know, your ear is trained to like expect certain things. And I think that like, they do a good job of keeping you guessing. They did a good job on White Pony of that. And they did a good job of ums on that. And, you know, it's not always comfortable and maybe you're not a fan of that over other music, but I think that's something they do a really good job at. I agree. And I, I like being challenged by music more than anything and certainly more than Carter probably does. I, but yeah, yeah, I was just gonna ask you. But, like but at the same time, like I, I seriously, I have yet to hear an Ariana Grande song that I didn't love. Like there is some shit out okay. there that in the realm of like top forty that I am like all in on. Um, yeah, but I'm I think big, you're gonna, uh, I'm a big Katy Perry guy myself. I, I'm I like, okay with yeah. Katy Perry. I actually like Taylor Swift, even though it's cool to hate her. Oh, I love Taylor Swift. I always have. But She's a good songwriter. Uh, yeah, you don't have She's to get great. boxed into to anything. It's just that. So, Stuff like that that is catchy when that's all there is, there's not usually a reason to return to it. Whereas that's fair. Sometimes different Deftones albums, you listen to them and you get different things out of them. Or like you're suddenly very aware of the job that Frank Delgado is doing on the synth, like kind of in the background in this album, um, and certainly in the foreground in Ohms. Or like you hear a Carpenter riff and it just fucking clicks. Like oh I. I get, like, I fucking get it. Like, I get what they were going for in the song. I think they nailed it. And to me, going back and discovering things and getting in tune with kind of maybe what a bunch of different people are doing on an album is some of the most satisfying shit when, when you're listening to music for, for me. And I completely just thoroughly disagree with your assessment of the Deftones, Carter, because I they're a band that consistently the the struggle the the two kind of halves playing at each other what they're able to produce is the sum of that is always greater than the individual elements of of uh of kind of discord that that you sometimes get but yeah i mean I, it, it's surprising that you would like pod and, and not deftones i i would think that maybe even white pony specifically would be like a stepping stone if you didn't like anything heavy 
to kind of get you more interested in what else is out there? Well, look, you know, I think that it's, yeah, I, I respect your opinion, obviously. And, and I think that you've, no, you no seriously, you make, you, you, you guys have all made, you know, really good points. Um, I might listen to it again honestly but i also feel like at least with these don't patronize us in real time on this podcast. no no no, no. Look me in the I... eyes when you lie to me you fuck <laughs> no i'm not i'm not lying i think what i'm saying is like i might just because i respect you guys enough to be like you know what they bring up some good points but at the same time i know myself pretty well and maybe it's because i have add and maybe it's because i'm you know like uh somewhat impatient about certain things but it ta- it, it's very it, it it's not it doesn't take long for me to know like when I like or don't like something, and I felt pretty quickly with a, with uh, White Pony and with Ohms that I was just like nope, and you know I I listened to it because that's you know that's my job to do for this and and I'm gonna do it and and I wasn't listening to it like <laughs> I was listening like I hope I'm gonna like something I hope I like something. And that moment just didn't really come. It was like it was like last week when I went and saw Tenet at the drive-thru. Like pretty quickly, I was like, "Oh no, I don't like this." And then, but I was like, "But I'm here. Let's see what happens." And then it just got worse and worse. All but right. So, so you're that's just me. You, so favorite song on White Pony. Yours is none of them. Uh, Stillwell's is Elite. I, I think Digital Bath is the crown jewel here. Nick Call, what do you like the most? I do like that you like Digital Bath. That's definitely one of my favorites. Um, I hate to be like everyone else, but Change is my all-time favorite Deftone song. Of all of all of them, not just the South. It's, it's my favorite Deftone song, but I would say... Wow, dude, you're a loser. No, that's I a know, good one. I, 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 I like <laughs> Be Quiet and Drive as their best song they've ever, they've ever had. I think that's That's a great one, too. But but yeah, I like Change is the White Coast. Pony. Yeah, Change is just, it's just such a fantastic song from start to finish. Um, and then for me, rounding up, rounding off the top three was Knife Party and Digital Bath. Yeah, the 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 guest vocals on Knife Party are fucking great. And oh, I man. always she goes always for it. I always <laughs> think of it when that song comes on because uh, he comes this close to saying we all float down here, and it makes me happy. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, the wow. vocals, Carter, if you haven't, if you don't recall what the latter half of Knife Party sounds like, you should do yourself a favor and just blast that tonight for you and Zoe. I'm sure Zoe would love it. <laughs> that, that's a I'll special little out. corner of this album. That, that I'll wake her up part for of it is tomorrow. fucking sweet. I'll just try but to that's a good song. That's a good song where you kind of get both ends of the spectrum of Deftones. Yeah. Um, I had written that one down too. I think I really liked, again, I, I think for this album, I gravitated more of the heavy stuff overall. Um, I think Korea is a, a fucking great song too. Yeah. And I love Passenger. I mean, it's a long song, but yes. I think that that bra- or that breakdown in the bridge and the way it builds up into that final chorus, I think is one of my favorite parts of this album for sure. Yeah, that, that's a good song. And apparently he wrote that with Maynard just passing like a notebook back and forth just like writing a line and then giving it to Maynard from Tool and then he would give it back and that's how they came up with the weird call and response for that that verse uh which I think is awesome um all right now we're, we're kind of getting to time so off ohms um Carter again favorite song none of them uh none of them yeah <laughs> wait but, I, but I, hang on did you have a favorite on a, on the Coldplay record uh I, you said I, trouble was good yeah trouble is definitely like, trouble is like it's not even it's not even the same fucking band that played trouble compared to the rest of that album okay trouble yeah. is a decent song yeah trouble could easily be a deftone song <laughs> that's no, easily, uh, easily. I, no, I'm not, I actually I'm not don't disagree kidding. with you that's why i'm laughing because they they chino has another like side project called team sleep and they have one album and it, it kicks ass but he's been open about how he would write songs for team sleep and they'd end up in deftones albums and then he there was some deftones song that ended up on the team sleep album and teenagers confirmed a a, a team sleep song i, I could have seen him dropping trouble into an album uh just like uh anniversary of an uninteresting event or something that's something that catches okay. you like what the fuck uh but anyway uh ohms i i thought ohms was the the best song off that album I hate that it's the one they released first. That makes me feel lame. Um, that riff just <clears throat> pushes its dick into and through my mouth. <laughs> and the I, I think the chorus is just 
great. I've listened to that song on loop, which is weird. I usually get tired of stuff, but I just love that fucking chorus. Um, Stillwell, what did you like? Um, <clears throat> my three standouts, um, I think the Genesis Ceremony doubleheader opener is really, really great. Um, oh, yeah. It immediately got me interested in the album because it was, again, more on the heavier side of I, what I think they do really, really well. Um, but I also really like Spell of Mathematics. That was a cool song. I don't know if you guys ever listen to like some of the post-hardcore bands like Thursday, um, yes. but they, they oh, kind of reminded me. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday's great. And I, I, I don't know, I, I randomly thought of that band when I was listening to the Spell of Mathematics, which is really probably the last, I think that's right before Pompeji. I think if so. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it is. So like, so you're you're you know, vibing that, at that point, and then you just fucking it's like being on a cartoon train <laughs> and someone throws the emergency brake. Yeah, exactly. I hate the name of that song, the the spell of mathematics. Like that's just all time yeah. bad name for the Deftones, <laughs> but uh, the song is good. Yeah, it's a cool song. It's a cool song. Nick Call. Um, I would say. Your description of Ohms was pretty, you know, applicable to me, minus the, the dick in and out of the mouth part of Ohms. Um, <laughs> it's tough for me to listen to metal without blowing a guy. That's, that's one thing you know about me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you just want to picture, you want to picture how they sound and how they taste, more importantly. That's the big oh, yeah, piece of it. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I, I hope you uh, put your bear impression into every single one of these episodes at some point. It's it's around fifty percent, I think. Fifty? I thought it was even less. I feel like I've only done it once or twice before. It's usually when he gets bored by the content. <laughs> oh, no. give me some credit, you big jerk. And by the way, I will say the one one song I didn't hate on Alms was a song called Error. Uh, look, who, look who's coming in remembering more songs after loudly proclaiming he did. I know, he knows Again. all the songs. He the, knows the, the song rememberer has logged into the Zoom. I'm he like, all right, chorus. fine. Chino's my godfather. I love Chino. <laughs> I send him fan letters and he never responds. That's interesting. I thought that, that, that riff on error is a little derivative to me. That sounded pretty familiar. And, yeah, maybe that's uh, why I liked it. <laughs> I'll, I'll go even farther and say, like, that's <laughs> almost a straight ripoff of a Soulfly song called Pain. And I know that. Chino right, and, and Max Caballero are buddies, so I don't know if that's by accident. But sorry, Nick Hall, continue with your love for Ohms. Well, I was just going to say, I feel like I had a reaction that Carter mentioned that, like, as soon as you hear it, you know whether or not you're going to like it. And I know there's the point of view where you need to listen to songs multiple times and albums multiple times, but Bear, like, texted me Ohms, like, out of the blue. Um, I didn't know I, they were coming I was, out. I was days. riding such a high. I was like, you got to fucking hear this. <laughs> uh, 10 seconds in, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be listening to this song uh, like 10 times in a row. And I did. Um, but yeah, that song's great. The album is great. Um, you know, it's not, for me, it's not going to stack up uh, as much as the older stuff. I mean, I do like it a lot, but, uh, you know, I guess to speak to the title of this podcast, if I'm going to go one album for the rest of my life for Deftones, it's no question going to be White Pony. Yeah, that I I really was debating if this is my favorite album from them, and I, I still don't know how I feel. Um, I I still really like Around the Fur, uh, and I, I think that's I a good thing. Like if you, I mean, if you kind of don't know which album is your favorite because they offer so many different things, I think that speaks to the band and what they can do. I agree, and I I didn't. Did you listen to Gore when it came out, Nicole? Not right when it came out. No. I did. You like it? Um. I'll say this, I can't think of a track immediately off the top of my head, so maybe that speaks to my experience with that one. I, I didn't like the first side of it until I listened to it a couple of times. I thought the second side was really good, but that one mm. seriously grew on me. So it's tough to even rank a new Deftones album. I mean, for me, this is like Christmas comes early this year, so I, I have no idea where it fits in because you got to let these things kind of marinate on your mind for a bit, um, even though I like it. Like, I, I don't know. It's It's real hard to see... When you're familiar with the band's work over a period of years, like you've had so we've had 20 years to listen to White Pony. Like I know I like, I know where the spots are that I like. I, like I, I, I put it on from front to back and I'm down. But I, I don't know where Ohms is going to fit in outside of this first week when I'm really feeling it. Um, yeah, I think like you said, you just got to give it time. Um, and kind of going back to a point you said earlier, where you know, for 
I don't want to say a less than good quality song, but for like a poppy song or maybe something that doesn't stick as well, you don't need to go back and listen to it again. Um, and I think like a comparison you could draw is like with a good movie and a bad movie, like a bad movie, even an okay movie, you could say, um, that was good. I don't need to see it again. But if you have a uniquely good movie, you'll watch it again and again and catch different things each time you watch it. And I think that could be said about Deftones is it has that replayability. You catch different things. So even though we've heard White Pony and some of these other albums, you know, for 20 years, you know, we know the experience, but you might have different moods going into it. You might catch different things here and there. So it's just, I feel like it's an always unique experience, at least for me. Sweet. Still well, final still well. thoughts. Is it still good and, and anything else on the Deftones? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I kind of didn't expect to like it. And I was, you know, a little reluctant to maybe do this podcast because I didn't think I was going to have much to contribute. <clears throat> um, and also just generally enjoying talking about things I really love more. But look, I gave it a few listens. First time I was like, man, it's, it's, I figured it was going to be me and Carter on the same side, but giving it five, six solid listens and kind of just getting more used to what they do as a band. Like, I think it's good. I don't think they're going to be one of my new favorite bands, but you know, if the Deftones come up on my Spotify or if I hear them on the radio, like I'll listen to it. I think it's still good. Awesome. I love it. I had a Deftones poster on my bedroom wall, by the way, just so I could always wow. look into Chino's eyes while I came. Uh, uh, Carter, any, any any final thoughts? Have, did you did you love it now after this discussion? Are you intrigued? Yeah, my opinion changed. changed. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, they're great. I love them. Um, I'm really sorry to our <laughs> listeners. I'm sorry to, to all of three of you. Uh, no, um, I have one final question. Call, you said something really interesting just and by the way i think uh all your opinions make complete valid sense and admittedly maybe i should have listened to it a few more times i, pro I probably still would have ended up where i was at but i did only listen to each album one time i i did um, think there was an outside chance you'd like it and i'm not just saying that i thought I that you could get into the the vibe of it I, I didn't i did not specifically set you up to fail here i thought like i know you he'll be challenged but he might like this and yeah, and, here, and here's like the, and here's the thing. You also said something, Bear, that you're like, I like to be challenged by my music, and I would say that like while I do like catchy stuff that kind of goes down easy, I do also like to be challenged too. I mean, Zeppelin has tons of catchy stuff, but they also have tons of stuff that is not catchy at all. That's just very atmospheric and weird and interesting, and that's some of my favorite stuff by them. And a lot of the same, you know, the Beatles White Album. That's not that's not like the catchiest album of theirs, but it's by far the most interesting, in my opinion, at least. Same with Beach Boys, Pet Sounds, a lot of that. Anyway, um, so I definitely will. Uh, you guys think I'm patronizing you? I'm not. I definitely will give give things another listen from them. But the one thing I wanted to bring up before we go is, Call mentioned something interesting just now. He said you have a you can see a movie that uh, you really like and you want to watch it again and again and again, same with an album. I want to ask, do you guys think that you can see a movie, and I don't know if this is the same for music, see a movie or listen to an album, and do you think you can say, like, I acknowledge that was good, I liked it, but I never want to see it again because of maybe the subject matter? Because I just had that experience with something, and I'll – delve into it if just i mean depending on what there, you there's say. definitely some specific examples that pop out for me one is like you know your schindler's list or just like terrible right. horrible subjects that are just like the most depressing thing in all of humanity right. you know i saw that movie i recognize it was great um i don't need to see it again right right yeah. that's what i'm getting at i tend to not feel that way even i mean schindler's list is like the poster child for this kind of discussion but I love um, that, that movie. I yeah, it's it. It, it's so well made, and if you, yeah, and if you're a big film nerd, I, I don't think you should be coming up on feeling that way too often. Right. Uh, I, I think the craft should pull you in. Yeah. More. Do you think uh, that's same the same with music though? Can you like I, listen to an album and be like, I'm really glad I heard this. I get why. I don't. Yeah, see, that that's the thing. I don't know if it's the same for music. I feel like music is different because you just. You're, if you like it, you're you're probably just going to want to keep listening to it. I think music tends to be more personal. Yeah. And the set of criteria you can use to evaluate music isn't as rigid as it is with movies. 
and it's also a little bit l less of a of a commitment in a way a movie you like you sit you watch you're taking it all in music you can do anything while you listen yeah it, it, it's easier it, it, yeah, it's, it doesn't require like a dedicated experience. So I don't know. I mean, I've sat through a million shitty movies. I've sat through a ton of bad student films where it's just like, I, can't, I just can't fucking do this. But as far as something that right. I could recognize as good and not want to experience again, I'd really have to think about it. What about you, Stillwell? <clears throat> I don't know. It's interesting. I think, I think it just depends on how you first experience it. Um, is it generally kind of shapes how you feel about it. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I just think it, I think like if we're talking pure nostalgia, like this is like, like same as the enema of the state conversation, if you liked it, then you're probably going to like it now. Um, but I don't necessarily think things necessarily surprise you many years later. I mean, I guess they can, but I, I do think generally like you're either going to like it early on, uh, things can grow on you certainly, but you're not going to come back to an album 10 years later and be like, Oh, I was wrong about that. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes sense. I mean, I, I, sense. I can definitely tell how, I mean, I think it's both for music and for movies for me. I've definitely gone into things the first time and not like them like you did with this album still well, you didn't like it off the bat, but it grew on you a little bit. And I just had that experience that this past year with uh, once upon a time in Hollywood, um, yeah, I did. I did not like that movie the first time that I saw it. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, and I still think it's painfully long. It's way too long. Um, I think it's but, too long too, but I love it. Too but strange. I watched it a second time, and maybe because it was because of the environment. I know still you talked about that as well. Like the first time you watched it. Um, second time I watched it, I was at home. I was by myself, and I really had I had the time to really focus in on it, and I appreciated the nuances I didn't notice before. And yeah. since then, I've, I've watched that movie like five times, and now I legitimately like it a lot. Um, so I do get the progression for movies and music, how you can kind of start off maybe not feeling it, and then as you listen to it or watch it more, it grows on you, and you can appreciate it more. Yeah. What, I think, what, I, okay, so you got to tell us what the thing was now, Carter. Oh, it was uh, When They See Us on Netflix, the miniseries about the Central Park Five. It's excellent, and I really liked it, but it was just, there are parts of it that are so harrowing and so infuriating that I'm like, I'm honestly not sure if I could ever watch this again. Um, because it's just, it, it, I think part of that is like, you know, what Call said with the Schindler List thing, like that shit fucking happened. That, that happened, and I was like crying at the end of it because the most horrible thing about it was these five young men their childhood was taken from them their innocence was taken from them and it's heartbreaking and thank god they're all okay now and you know they are they're you know at least from what i can tell they're thriving and they they were you know rightfully acquitted and, and all that but like the shit that they went through for over a decade is just shameful and again it's really, I agree. It's funny that you mentioned the craft thing, Bear, because I was definitely pulled in by the direction and the performances and everything. Um, but yeah, at the end of it, I was like, whoa. Like, you know, it's like a five hour miniseries and it's just, it's not an easy watch. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. But I think to, I think to, to Call's point, yeah, I think you can revisit something years later when something that you might not have liked and then watch it again later and be like, oh no, I really like this. But I do think you have a point too, Stillwell, with an album. I'm not sure if you, I'm not sure if that's ever happened to me with music. I'm not sure if I like yeah, this. Yeah, I think that's what I'm kind of, I, I think yeah. that's what I'm kind of getting at. I, I just can't recall a time where that's happened to me. Um, yeah, I can't either. I, I can recently actually. I, that You know uh, the band Always? Yes. I heard a couple of their songs like this fucking sucks. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know why I gave it a second chance, but I ended up playing their album Anti-Socialites like a year or two later, like not even that much time has passed. I think it came out like 2017. And I was like, oh, never mind. This slaps. I was totally wrong. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. This is All right. There you go. Well, guys, I think that's our. I think that's. I think that's our time to wrap it up. That's oh, good, we went long and deep on we the went tones long, here. But this was a fun one. This was fun. Again, I'm really glad that. Uh, really glad that the Knicks came back. We got to have the Knicks on to discuss uh, 
probably the next album we're gonna do is Raffi, the kid singer. We're gonna do how about like one of the how about one of the now albums? We have a <laughs> wide selection <to> from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, yeah, you can visit us at stillgoodshow.com, uh, Instagram at stillgoodshow. Um, you can also send us an email, stillgoodshow at gmail.com. Um, for the month of October, Bear and I are going to be doing uh, spooky subjects like Halloween candy, pumpkin carving, some scary movies. Maybe I don't, I don't know if there's like a horror album. Is there? Probably not. I don't know. Well, the Monster Mash comes to mind. So. Yeah, the Monster mm-hmm. Mash. That's cool. Yeah, maybe some like classic Halloween songs. Um, uh, but yeah, that's what we're going to be doing for the month of October. Each week we're going to do a, a new like October themed thing. Um, so yeah, we look forward to that. And thanks everybody for listening. And thank you to the Knicks for joining us once again. Your opinions yes. are really, truly insightful and we really love having you guys. So thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Uh, Yeah, bye. Bye.